Okay, quick check here, make sure everything is going. So this camera is hot, that camera is hot. This microphone hopefully is hot. The other microphones, I think everything is good to go. I hope everything's gonna go good. Everything is good to go. I try, I'm gonna try and do all of this in one take so that we really just show the experience. This is not gonna be, it's gonna be condensed for time, but not for functionality. I'm no, nobody gets any breaks here. So let's make sure that we can do this correctly. What's happening, Boo Chunkies? Mike Delgadio here, back with another video on home studio setup for voiceover. Something a little bit different uh, today. We're going to be talking about uh, a company and their new product. So the company is Riverside.fm, and they are launching their new iOS app. If you're unfamiliar with Riverside.fm, we're going to talk about it for just a moment, and then we're going to demonstrate exactly how all this stuff works, and we'll show you what, how their app works. If you're a voice actor, if you're a podcaster, if you're a YouTuber and you're interested in doing remote conversations, interviewing with people, uh, discussions, anything where you would be trying to record a discussion and you want to have the best quality you can, then Riverside.fm should definitely be on your radar. What Riverside does is as the meeting is occurring, so as the interview is happening, you are certainly seeing each other, you're collaborating in real time, and that is being compressed and, and for bandwidth purposes. But behind the scenes, your microphone and your camera are being streamed up to the server in their highest resolution quality. So if it's a 1080p camera, it's being sent up in 1080p. Your microphone is being sent up just exactly as the microphone hears it behind the scenes so that at the conclusion, you also have the original camera and the original microphone sound so that you can download and then edit that into a video. It's a really interesting differentiator and their pricing plans have a different amount of recording time for each one. So we'll talk about all of those features as we go through and demonstrate it. So let's actually see how this works. I've got Riverside open right down below me. As a paying customer, this is what you would see. So I'm right now uh, a typical paying uh, customer for Riverside. This is what you see up front. This is their dashboard page, if you will. And you can see it's it's pretty straightforward. You can have a number of recording studios and you can see what has been recorded in those recording studios. So right now you can see that Booth Junkie has a recording studio. And if we're ready to start an interview, we can go to that recording studio. It will go through the machinations. And I should say, it's my understanding that you have to have the Chrome browser in order for this to work. It has to be over Chrome. Once the recording studio opens up, what you see is you as the host, you enter in whatever you want your name to be displayed as. So I'm just going to leave it as Mike D. I'm the host. And you indicate whether or not you're wearing headphones. So that way it can try and do that echo reduction. If you're wearing headphones, it will let you hear it. But if you're using uh, external speakers, it will try and do that uh, echo cancellation device. Even though I'm not wearing headphones, I'm going to say that I'm using headphones because that would be that would be typical. Uh, so I'm going to, head, going, to, going to go ahead and click Join Studio. At that time, the studio itself is going to be created and you get a new interface. The interface shows you as the host what you look like, what you're going to look like on camera. And the other half allows you to uh, invite a number of people. The, there are different, kind of, different kinds of invitations that you can have. You can invite people as a guest. So somebody whose camera and mic are going to be hot. They're going to be on the show, as it were. You can invite people as an audience member. Their camera and mic's not on. They're in listen-only mode. They can just listen in. And then also as a producer. A producer is someone whose mic and camera are not hot, but they have sort of admin privileges in the recording studio. So they can bring uh bring guests on, send them off. They can manage sort of as a director or a producer, they can manage the show so that the host doesn't have to occupy themselves with looking down at the screen and managing it. As just a little tiny scotch of professionalism to them if you have a producer that can help you. 
I'm going to go, go ahead and invite myself on as a guest. Why myself? Well, I'm going to show you the iOS application, which at the time of my recording, this is embargoed. So I can't, I don't want to share it with anybody else. So I'm just going to show you how, how it works. Once you have the link, you can either copy it to put it uh, into uh, an email that you write, uh, somebody, you know, maybe an upfront email that you're going to do to warm up a guest, or you can invite via email directly from within Riverside. As far as limits go, you have, it's my understanding that you can have a total of eight hot cameras and mics. So host plus seven guests for a total of eight people, plus a producer, plus any number of people in the audience. Okay, with me so far? Okay, so now as the host, I'm going to invite the guests. So I'm going to copy that link, I'm going to pen up an email, and I'm going to send it over. So let's go over to the iOS device and actually see what that experience is like. So heading over to the iOS device, it's actually very straightforward. It's going to, what I'm show you, going to show you is going to be a little bit different than what the real life experience is because I'm using the beta version, uh, but this is going to be, hopefully, it, hopefully it will all make sense. I, uh, if they have the link sent to them via email, when they click the link in email, the iOS device will know to open up the Riverside, um, the Riverside application. I just only have the URL. I didn't send an email, so I'm just going to paste the URL over from the main computer. That's going to happen to open up the riverside.fm and I manually am opening up the application. Under normal circumstances, that would happen automatically through the mail app. But once you're in, the experience for your guest is very, very straightforward. They get prompted for their name. So I'm just going to say that my name is guest so that we can see it and click return. And then they get to see to make sure that their hair and everything looks, looks the way they want. And then when they're ready, they just click join the show. Uh, so as the guest, they, all they need to do is make sure that everything looks right for them. Put in their name, say join, and they're ready to go. If there's a waiting room, they'll enter the waiting room. If they're invited on as a guest without a waiting room, they just come on and bingo, they're live. So I can now interact with the host and really that's all I need to do. Now, what I don't know that I need to do just because I've, during my testing, what I know I needed to do is I need to also rotate the device uh, because of a, a bug I discovered where it, it wants to rotate the camera. So I'm gonna rotate the device here. Now we'll go back to the host and we'll see actually how to start the recording. Great, so now we're back as the host and all the host needs to do if they're ready to begin their interview, they've warmed up and said, okay, you're gonna do great. Here's, the, here's what we're gonna talk about and let's go ahead and let's jump into it. So you click start recording and after a second, you're gonna get a count in five, four, three, two, one, and you're going to get to jump right into the, uh, to the recording. So what you're seeing at this point these are the recordings that are provided to us from Riverside. So we're not uh, local to what I was recording before. These are the files that I'm downloading directly from Riverside. So let's now switch back and let me join. Uh, let me start talking as the guest on the iOS device so we can see what that quality looks like. Back we go. Okay, so now we're back on the iOS side and this is just an example of what the iOS recording looks like, just using a regular old iPhone X, not the latest version. This is just your plain old basic iPhone X. And this is using the regular iOS microphone or the Apple microphone, the iPhone microphone. Uh, and no, I don't have any Air, Air, uh, AirPods or anything like that. So I wanna just give a sense of, of what that typically would sound like. So I put the, they, they happen to put the guest right next to the camera here. So I can try and make eye contact either with myself or with the, uh, with the tally light. And then I know that I'm making, making eye contact, but this is an example of what the iOS recording would look like. Okay. So now the interview is complete. We've done our talking. We've yucked it up. We've had a really good time. Let's now go back and see what the host does to conclude the meeting and then get the recordings. So we'll head back.
So as you can see, very straightforward, super easy for the, uh, for the remote person using their phone. They just turn it on, put in their name and they're ready to go. When the, when the recording is done, when you're all done, you can come over here, give it a name. So this is a ter interview with Mike. <laughs> and, and then we can say that we're going to stop recording. After that, the recordings are done and you'll see that it's uploading. You get a little prompt there that it's uploading those recordings up to the server and it's doing it fairly close to real time, as real time as it can. At the same time, the iOS device is also streaming up that MP4 up to the Riverside servers, and there's nothing that the guest needs to do. So you're going to get the highest quality that the phone had to offer at that time, and it should be ready in just a moment. Okay, so we're going to conclude the meeting, and let's go back and actually see what we get. We're going to hang up, end meeting for all, confirm that, yep, that we're going to end it for everybody, asks you for some feedback. And now we'll switch back and we'll go back to the dashboard and see what we see in the, uh, in the dashboard. Returning back to the dashboard as the host, I now switch instead of going to the recording studio, I can just click view all recordings and I can see the most recent one is the interview with Mike. So that's great. So we know it works. The most recent one that we did is up at the top. We can see what the resolution was. We see that it was a three minute interview. From here, since the MP4s are all set and ready to go, I can download the MP4 from the camera. I can download the MP4 from the host, from the get, uh, from me, my, my camera. I can download both, both of those to my computer and I can bring them into Final Cut or iMovie or whatever I use to edit my videos, and I get the final version. Before we go over and take a look at that, though, uh, we're going to also show one additional feature that they have that's in beta. Works okay. They're working on it right now, but it's the Magic Editor, a feature that I think is uh, going to really, really be interesting once, once they get it sort of all the way dialed in. But what the Magic Editor is, if you don't have experience with iMovie, if you don't have a ton of experience with video editing, it can do a very basic version for you so that you can send this out. So it asks you, it's a little bit of a four, uh, several steps in a wizard, and you can just say, here's, here's, what I want it, here's what I want it to look like. So I want to include both my guest and the host. So we're going to add both channels. It can do a little bit of audio processing. So if, if, if either or both side is in a noisy environment, you can turn on the noise suppression. Mine is not too noisy, so I'm going to leave that. And you can also turn on normalized gain. So if one uh, microphone is hotter than the other, it will try and bring them back into alignment so, it's, uh, so that the audio comes in pretty uh, clearly. Next, it will ask you if you want to fill the screen or if you want it to have an outline so you can fill the screen and then click Next. And then it's going to ask you if you'd like to add a watermark or any kind of frame in the foreground. So if there's anything you needed to crop out, you could create an overlay. So we'll just say, we'll browse for my logo. And you can say which side you want it to be on, the bottom right, for example. And then I can also add a frame as an overlay. So if I wanted to crop out anything that I didn't want visible, I can add a frame to the recording and it just gets added in. Once that's done, you click next and it will ask you what you want that file to be downloaded and at what resolution do you want to be able to export it. So we'll just keep it at 1080p and we'll click finish. It will let you know that it's processing and up there on the Riverside servers, it's doing some magic. So this is sort of like an intermediate step that if, you're, if you don't want to edit the raw audio and video yourself, you can have Riverside do it. My experience is it's still uh, a beta product. So it's, it's in progress, but we'll take a look and see what it looks like. It will tell you that it's composing it. It will take a couple of minutes, depending on how long it took you to create that. Um, it will take a few minutes. So while that's composing, let's go look at just a couple of other features that are available in Riverside. From the studio itself, you see that you can record whether or not you want to just do audio or audio and video. So if you're just doing a like a uh, an audio only podcast, you can do just just audio only recording. You can decide if there's going to be a waiting room. You can decide what your default um, what your default 
recordings are uh, going to be. So what resolution? 1080p is probably most sensical. Um, you can indicate whether or not you want everything on separate tracks. Uh, so um, whether or not you want the internet backup, so the stuff that was streamed up that was seen live by everybody, um, the internet backups, you can also put those on separate tracks and you can also integrate it to Dropbox. So you can have those recordings automatically end up in your Dropbox. Pretty cool. In the recording studio itself, if there's other functionality that you'd like to use during, uh, during the recording session, you can also mark during your recording those same sort of settings that we saw, whether or not you want it to be audio and video and so forth. All of those things are available to you as you enter into the recording studio. And also you have the ability to live stream. So if you'd like to simulcast this to YouTube or to Facebook or anything like that, you can simulcast at the, at the same time. Once the composed track is completed in Riverside, so once, uh, once the Magic Editor has done its thing, that's called a composed track, you can then download that composed track. Jump right into the, uh, to the recording. So what you're seeing at this point, these are the recordings that are provided to us from Riverside. So we're not uh, local to what I was recording before. These are the files that I'm downloading directly from Riverside. So you can see that it's got a really nice uncompressed version, really nice clear audio, stuff that I can then pull that own camera and the guest's own camera, and I can weave it together to do whatever sort of interview that I want. So let's now switch back and let me join, uh, let me start talking as the guest on the iOS device so we can see what that quality looks like. Back we go. Okay, so now we're back on the iOS side and this is just an example of what the iOS recording looks like just using a regular old iPhone X, not the latest version. This is just your plain old basic iPhone X. And this is using the regular iOS microphone or the Apple microphone, the iPhone microphone. Uh, and no, I don't have any Air, Air, uh, AirPods or anything like that. So I want to just give a sense of, of what that typically would sound like. So I put the, they, they happen to put the guest right next to the camera here so I can try and make eye contact either with myself or with the, uh, with the tally light. And then I know that I'm making, making eye contact. But this is an example of what the iOS recording would look like. My experience with the Compose Track, as you can see, there is a bit of compression. So the uh, the uh, image that I uploaded was a 1080p image, and you can see that everything has a little bit of fuzz to it. So I think they're still tweaking their compression algorithms on their Magic Editor uh, in order to make it sort of sent uh, make it sensible for a bandwidth uh, download. Uh, but I do find that the Magic Editor. It, it the 1080p resolution it does seem to be fairly compressed down it's almost like they're making a, a 480p version and then scaling up is sort of what it looks like so the magic editor still needs a little bit of work but it's a work in progress and it's labeled as beta so there you have it that's riverside.fm and that's their new ios application really easy to use pricing is uh pretty straightforward you you purchase it based on the amount of recording that you'd like them to, to record for you. So you can see that it starts at um, either you can bill it by the year or by the month. So it's either $750 or $15 a month or $24 if you want to bill it uh, a year in advance. Or if you want to do it by the month, it's $9, $19, or $29. And it really depends on how much of the uh, recording that you want to have. So it's 15 hours, 5 hours, or 2 hours, depending on the price. So if you're just doing maybe one interview a month, the basic might be fine. If you're doing a lot of interviews, you're doing a, you know, half an hour interview every single day of the month, then you could use the, the pro version. And then there's an enterprise version if you want to go up past that. So there you have it. That's riverside.fm. That's their new iOS app. I hope that helps. See if it's right for you. See if it makes sense for you. That's all I have for you today. Now go get yourself a microphone and maybe some real-time recording software that's up on the cloud and based on the web so you can start doing interviews. That would be pretty cool. But that's all I have for you today. Now, get out there, go record something amazing. Thanks. We'll talk to you next time. Take care.